stand with Ukraine. These words became a globally known expression. These words reflect a deep connection, true compassion, and real support provided in many ways. How can coaches and coaching communities support Ukraine and professional coaches in Ukraine? What kind of cooperation is being created between ICF Ukraine Charter Chapter and ICF chapters in different countries? What is possible to develop together now and in the future? What are the challenges and opportunities professional coaches are dealing and seeing within in this wartime? This and many related questions are in the focus of our conversation today, October 14th, 2022. This is the podcast, Coaches Stand with Ukraine. Greetings to everybody who is listening to us today. I'm Larissa Homans, transformational story coach for leaders and change agents, past president of ICF Ukraine, co-leader of partnership initiatives, volunteer, and co-host of this podcast. I'm Olga Vasilets, co-host of this podcast, ACC ICF, creative resilience coach for leaders in business and non-profit sectors, co-leader of partnership initiatives within ICF Ukraine chapter, volunteer. Thank you all our listeners. Your attention to our podcast is increasing with each new episode. If you haven't subscribed to this podcast, please do it now. Your support with likes, comments, questions, and shares with others is very important. You also can email us directly. You can see our emails in the description to this podcast. At the beginning of our conversation today, I want to say that today Ukrainians celebrate the Day of Defenders and Defendresses of Ukraine. We send our warmest greetings to all defenders of our country, to all brave men and women who fight and protect Ukraine in all possible ways at every given moment. With a deep gratitude, we wish you to be strong and blessed. We wish glory and victory to Ukraine. We also want to thank two people from around the world who support Ukraine by donating and volunteering providing military, humanitarian, and professional support. We want to thank two coaches who stand with Ukraine. And now I'm honored to greet here our colleague, Sarah Heppel, CEO and founder of Spectrum Leadership Solution, LLC, a top leadership consultant and executive coach who excels in cultivating leadership excellence. Formerly an international athlete, Sarah's mission is to maximize the team performance and well-being of 100,000 teams by 2025. Sarah works with global organizations driven to improve their communication, productivity, and corporate culture. One powerful conversation at a time. With a Master of Science in Mass Communication, Sarah is known for spreading thought-provoking programs with spark personal and professional transformation. Sarah is an accredited master certified coach, MCC, by the International Coach Federation. Sarah is also from the cohort of professional coaches, the members of ICF Metro DC chapter, who provides pro bono coaching to ICF Ukraine colleagues. Hello, Sarah, and welcome to this podcast. Hello, Laura, and hello, Olia. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you, and thank you for your volunteerism. Thank you. Sara, is there anything else you would like to say at the beginning of our conversation before I start the first question? Well, I just want your listeners to know the tremendous amount of dedication and servant leadership that this takes to run this podcast and all of the things that you're doing for our profession and the coaching community. Uh, I'm not sure if they really truly know how much time and energy and heart and grit that that takes. So I I just want to give a special shout out to the amazing volunteerism that the two of you uh, are are doing and dedicating to our profession and, and, and supporting in so many ways. So thank you for that. Thank you, Sarah. 
So what we can do, we also are supporting our country in the way we can do it as a professional people, as a coaches, and also as Ukrainians who are caring about our country and who are wishing our country to win and to protect the values we are standing for. As you know, that we start every conversation within this podcast with the same question. And this question, in my opinion, is defining the common ground for what we do together. Coaches stand with Ukraine. What does it mean for you, Sarah? Yeah, thanks for that question. You know, I've been thinking hard on that and, and so many different things come into my head and my heart with that question. And overall, I would say that you could just tweak that a little bit to say coaches stand with Ukraine. I think it could be edited just a bit to say coaches stand with you humanity. That's what it means to me. And as a coach living in the Washington DC area in, in the USA, far away yet not from everything that's happening in, in Ukraine right now, how, what it meant to me was how could I support? How could I help? How could I um, bear witness? How could I contribute? And to something happening, you know, uh, an ocean away and something that left me feeling so, so helpless on so many fronts. So it's been an absolute honor to stand with Ukrainian coaches and to be able to walk in just a little bit of that journey as well with all of our colleagues who are in Ukraine or connected to Ukraine um, on so many fronts. So it, it's been very meaningful for me to be considered playing just a tiny little role in, in standing with Ukraine during this time. Sarah, thank you a lot for sharing and we appreciate a lot everything you are doing for our colleagues and for Ukraine. And uh, actually, we know that recently you have completed a five-month pro bono coaching engagement with a small group of ICF Ukraine coaches. This is the first time when you were working with your professional colleagues from Ukraine. What can you say about this cooperation? Yeah, thank you for that question. You know, it was truly unique and, and like nothing I had experienced before uh, as a coach or really just as a person. In full disclosure, when I saw this opportunity, this uh, amazing opportunity that um, Kenny Lehman and our, our local ICF Washington DC Board of Directors decided to, to jump into and, and co-create, I was afraid to step forward. I wasn't sure what I could do. It, it felt overwhelming, uh, the topic, the people, the whole, I, I just felt kind of shell-shocked and I, I didn't know what I could do. And so fear was holding me back. And then I realized, you know, I don't have to be an expert here. I just need to listen and to somehow support my fellow coaches in Ukraine in any way, shape, or form, and, and trust in the process that we could co-create what that looked like together, just like we normally would with clients in our regular coaching conversations. So decided to take the leap and, and be vulnerable and, and say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to serve, I'm happy to support, I'm happy to, to work with a small group, and, and let's see what happens. You know, we began in March and we had a total of 10 official hours to just come together with our coaches in Ukraine and, and kind of make this happen together. And it felt like we kind of went through these three stages together as a, as a small group. And I wasn't the only person feeling shocked and, and paralyzed and, and fearful. So we felt this as a group and everybody leaned into that and, and everybody talked about that. And, and then we got together and kind of by June, I would say that we were moving into this acceptance of this is where we are and this is life now as we know it. And, and, and then we were able to kind of move into this readiness for reflection. And it was amazing that I learned so much from this group and was a part of it, just like our colleagues in, in Ukraine. And it was an, just a, a really a transformational experience. And then you sprinkle in that for me, in my coaching practice, I had never worked with a translator real life 
real time translating uh, coaching moves. And so that was a whole nother really interesting dynamic that, that really shifted the conversation in some ways, and yet it didn't. Thank you, Sarah, for expressing who you are, saying that you were feeling the fear. And I think to be brave doesn't mean do not have fear at all. It means just to embrace that it's possible to be fearful and do anything what you are committed to do as a leader, as a coach, as a human being who are caring about other people. And you also mentioned that your local chapter, but by the way, this local chapter, ICF Metro DC chapter, is the second biggest chapter in the world within ICF and the biggest city-based chapter. It's about 1,800 coaches. And you not just joined to this initiative, you co-created these initiatives together. It's kind of professional responsibility not just the kind of professional responsibility as the manifestation of how coaching values can be expressed and shown during the war time. Thank you for doing that. My pleasure, of course, to be a part of anything that we can co-create together. And early this week, I had the privilege to participate in the closing small group coaching session you mentioned about. The reflection, the stories which our colleagues share were touching my heart. And I also think that coaching is always beneficial experience for the coaches and the coaches. And you already mentioned that there are most valuable outcomes for the participants you were working with and for you in professional and personal context. Can you share a little bit more? Yes, thank you for, for asking that and thank you for, for being a part of that closeout. You know, the thing that, that struck me as so powerful through this whole experience and then really holding the space to reflect on what, what happened here with this group and, and what happened in our journey together was this theme of identity. We came into this shaken, I think, with who am I now and really continued to work on the who do I need to let go of and, and who do I want to become? And it was so touching to see that this group was, was ready for that reflection and ready for that deep dive into the pain of letting go of an old identity and maybe the, the weirdness of sitting in a, in a place where I don't know what, what the future holds yet, but I know it's not going to be the same as what it was before. And it was transformational to hold the space for this group and, and just be able to also go through my own transformation of identity of who am I as a coach? Who am I as a colleague? Who am I as uh, a neighboring continent? It was so powerful to see how in tune each person was in this group with who they wanted to be and who they wanted to become. And, and I think another thing that was really interesting was to see how much the professional development also played into this experience. Everybody still wanted to coach and run their business and connect with their clients and add value in their businesses. And the resilience of it all was spectacular because of course we all wanna con contribute and bring our gifts to the world, uh, even in a wartime. So this is a space we ask our clients to step into again and again and again. And it was just a gift to be able to step into this space with fellow coaches who were ready to do that deep reflection and explore identity and possibilities. And it was amazing to see the resilience um, that was had and held and co-created. If it's possible to reflect a little bit, I remember our first conversation while preparing on this podcast when the idea to have this interview conversation with you within this podcast came up. I remember that jointly and quickly we concluded that this conversation could touch not just one, but a few topics. And it's already happened here. Identity and resilience and professional growth and mastery. And in some way, we are mastering the resilience and also developing professional way during the most challenging, unpredictable, extremely painful, horrific time is making us even stronger. And these things are connected. 
recently we are talking with Ole about it because Ole is focusing on resilience and creative way how to empower resilience and how to make resilience stronger. Ole, what you would like to add to this? Thank you for sharing and uh, for this question, Larissa. I totally agree about uh, empowering resilience in these difficult times. And um, it resonates me a lot what Sarah told uh, about identity and about professional growth of uh, coaches. Sharing my experience, for me, identity and resilience are very connected. During this difficult period of wartime, I ask myself so many times, where am I now? Where do I go? And what my values are right now? And identifying my values and understanding my new roles and actually my new identity helped me a lot to grow my resilience. And um, considering identity, yeah, I have one more question to Sarah. Sarah, you hold the highest credential in professional coaching. You are a master certified coach. What can you share about your professional code journey with us and our listeners? Uh, thank you for that question. It's been a long and curly journey. I guess I started my official certification program 13 years ago and started out as, as a journalist in a former career, in a former life, which feels like a long, long time ago. And I remember sitting in that chair being in complete awe of the faculty and these experienced credentialed coaches who had paved the way before me and wondering what, what the future would hold if I actually chose to walk in those footsteps. And I remember all of these questions of what, what will I do with this coaching certification? What might be possible to me now? Do I even wanna do this? I didn't really know much about the field or the profession when I started. And now you fast forward now, uh, 13 years later, with an official certification from a coach education program and uh, officially being a master certified coach for, for two years. The first thing I would say is I almost am here with a bit of disbelief. So for any newer coaches out there that are also kind of wondering, what do I do with this? And what's going to happen now with this coaching background? that's okay. The sky is the limit. Whether you decide to start a business and, and go off and become a full-time coach, or you never really do anything too officially with it, yet you know truly how to have this type of a conversation and you know the framework of a coaching conversation. It's so useful to truly understand this type of conversational competency. I use it every day in everything that I do professionally, with my kids, with my neighbors. It's so impactful to understand what this type of a conversation is like. So I would say if you are somebody who's very active with the International Coach Federation, ACC, PCC, or MCC at that mastery level, wherever you are, that's wonderful. And with each level that you choose to undertake or pursue, it makes you a better listener it makes you a better conversation partner. And for me, it's deepened the level of relationships that I can build with people. And I'm, I'm very grateful to have uh, learned with such deep knowledge, the, the competencies and, and been able to support the, the International Coach Federation too. It's not the only certifying body out there. There are other programs as well. It's really worth knowing the difference of certified coaching versus doing it on the fly. There's a huge difference and it's a respectable professional industry and profession like none other. And the more people who we have that understand this, the better. Vizola, we have another question to you, Sarah. It's also related to your professional story in coaching. You mentioned you were asking yourself what, what the future will be possible to have future will be unfolding if you are using professional coaching. Now there are many discussions about future of coaching, about reimagining coaching, redefining this profession. In last month, you were taking part in the annual conference organized by the ICF Metro DC chapter. And the title of this conference was Coaching Today, Tomorrow and Beyond. And you also facilitated the workshop during that event. And how do you see future of coaching in your country? 
and at the global level, especially knowing what is happening in the global landscape? That's such a great question. And, and I would give anything to have my crystal ball here and, and give a, a succinct prediction. But one thing that I can assess pretty confidently is that coaching is on the rise and growing one of the fastest growing professions uh, globally around the world. So it's not going anywhere. I think that number one, coaching is embedded everywhere, whether it's within your organization and you're a, a senior leader, whether you're fresh out of college, high school students are getting coaching now. Yeah, there's coaching with mother daughters, there's coaching with um, expatriates, there's coaching, it's embedded in so many places. And it's been interesting since I've been a certified coach in the last 13 years to see how just from my own vantage, you know, how the industry and the profession is really shifting. And that I don't think that's going away. It's, it's embedded just everywhere in society. And I think that trend is going to continue, especially with COVID. I feel like there is another big switch with people leaning on coaches like never before with, with COVID. It's kind of a household thing now, at least in the Washington, D.C. metro area. I know it's not necessarily true globally all over the world, uh, but it's definitely still on the rise. I think that um, number two, that we should have basically a mindset of abundance, not scarcity. And sometimes I hear that, oh, my gosh, we're being saturated. There's too many coaches out there. I think the more people that understand how to have this type of a conversation, the better. And one of the advantages of being in a coach education program where I, I have the honor of certifying executive coaches or leadership coaches at George Mason University, we see a whole fresh round of 26 leaders from all walks of life coming through our program and learning this and learning about the profession kind of with fresh eyes and wide eyes. And a lot of them are going back into their organizations uh, or individually, and, and they're, they're creating coaching opportunities and coaching programs internally, especially in, in the government. We're seeing this a lot. So it's embedded. It's growing. We can use coaches everywhere and many, many, many more. And, and the third thing I would say about that is that we, we have to absolutely have to continue educating the public about what is it exactly, because there's still a lot of confusion I feel here locally and internationally as well, like coach, you mean baseball coach or what is that exactly? Or, or I'm a coach too. And so my goal would be that people actually understand truly what coaching is. We need to educate the public. It's not consulting. It's not teaching. It's not therapy. It's not mentoring. There's some crossover and it's a different conversational competency. And so we need to continue to educate people about that as it continues to grow. There are some huge coaching statistics and trends out there. If I could just share, this one's coming from, from Stanford. 75% of Fortune 500 companies report that coaching is the most important role that their managers must play. And leaders who work with a coach increase productivity by 87%. And more than 70% of employees are likely to leave a job if their manager is a poor coach. So just think about that. How good of a coach am I? Do I really understand what this is? Well, if you don't mind, I have another question to Sarah. I look at your company's website, Sarah, preparing to have this conversation. And I saw this quote, be brave enough to start a conversation that matters. Margaret Whitley. What do you think? What is a conversation that leaders in business, non-profitable sector, and particularly in coaching industry, have to be brave enough to start during these days? For us, these days are war days. For other world, probably not so painful. But what topics that matters are emerging now? I love that quote by Meg Wheatley and uh, boldly put it on our website, as you said, because it's a, it's a beautiful invitation to step into those missing conversations. It's a beautiful question that you're, you're asking. What are those missing conversations? And we actually do several uh, modules and workshops and leadership training programs around missing conversations. And I think that each unit, each team, each company, each firm 
And each organization has to answer that themselves. What are the missing conversations? And, and I just love this general idea of a missing conversation is simply a conversation that we're not having. And there's lots of different reasons, but we don't have it. Maybe we're too busy, or maybe we're afraid, or maybe we don't have time, or maybe we didn't even know that was a thing and it was important. So I think the biggest challenge is to actually slow down and think about what are the conversations we're just, we're not addressing or I'm not addressing. By the way, it can be an internal conversation as well. And having the self-awareness around what might be possible and what could be impactful if I actually chose to lean into that conversation it is a really powerful thing that we see a lot of our leaders kind of struggle with. We're so busy having conversations that we rarely stop to think about what our conversations might be creating. Um, and I can also tell you that from our clients over the years, there's kind of a pattern and a theme of the biggest missing conversations. And I would say there's there's kind of a, a top two tie in, in my opinion from what we're seeing from our, our clients at the moment. And the first one, I don't know if you could guess this. We always ask our groups to guess this. And so far, nobody ever gets this one. Number one missing conversation within organizations in our experience is gratitude. It's thank you. It's I appreciate this and I appreciate you. Savor the success. Savor the win. Don't just run on to the next thing. I, at all levels of organization, somebody fresh out of school or even at the top of the CEO, they're telling us, I'd like to be valued more. So biggest missing conversation. And I would say the other one that's probably tied in a, in a close uh, second for that, that we're hearing everywhere across all sectors is conversations for inclusivity. What is it like to be me? Can I hold space for others who aren't like me? What are you going through? Can I hear something that's very difficult to hear? Can I hold space for other people that maybe don't have the same platform or the opportunities to speak into their concerns because they look different or they sound different or they act different or whatever the reasoning is. So a lot of conversations around inclusivity, diversity, uh, equity. That's a huge missing conversation right now that I feel that everybody needs to be braver in starting to have a dialogue about this, even if it's awkward, even if you're scared, just like I was to, to step in with Ukraine coaches. I was afraid and it was such a big missing conversation and I'm so glad that I stepped into it. So, you know, don't be afraid to step into those missing conversations, whatever they look like for you your organization, or even your family. Sarah, coming back to the partnership initiative you were involved, what perspectives do you see after the pro bono coaching engagement is over? Uh, such a great question. Thank you. I just think that in general, to sum that up, I see this coach approach on an entirely new level. Uh, if somebody would have told me at the end of this experience with the pro bono coaching engagement with the group of coaches from Ukraine that I couldn't even understand one word of the language, didn't know much about the culture and, and watching a war from abroad. What, what, what could I do to, to connect? And it just reinforced all those beautiful things that we learn as coaches to truly be present, to trust that the other folks in the conversation will come up with their their own needs and their own values and where they need to go, to um, ask about the learning, to care enough to hold space for what is that like to be you, that active listening and all of those beautiful competencies that we try to bring into our coaching conversations each and every time. That happened here. And it happened even in the silence. It happened through body language and expressions and emotions and it was so powerful it just was i'm taking away i'm still processing how powerful of an experience this was and what a gift it was to just be a part of a group and an experience 
like this. And, and to quote one of the people in our, our group, she said, you know, this was the highest level of manifestation of compassion. And she said, I've never seen anything like it. And we really stepped up to meet the other people who were on this journey and in this conversation with us. And uh, it was really transformational. Thank you, Sarah. And coming back uh, to the conversation we had earlier that things can be connected, topics can be connected. I think probably clarity and courage might be the another topics of undelivered conversations that professional coaches can do, can have. And clarity, what is a life? What is the world we are living now? And if we have enough courage to face with the challenges and then name them and then deal with them and then grow with them and master, not just professional mastery, but human beings mastery during this conversation. This is my reflections to what you just shared. But my question, it's maybe not usual, but I like that question anyway. What might be the question you would like to answer during this conversation? But for some reason, this question hasn't been asked yet. Yeah, it's such a beautiful question. I, I love it. Thank you for the opportunity. And, and the thing that popped into my mind was, how can we all boost public awareness about the profession and why should we care? And I think the answer to that is that People use this coach approach and coaching moves in their average everyday lives everywhere, yet they don't know that they're doing it. And I would absolutely love to see all of us as coaches take the mystery out of that and help people understand what they just did and what that opens up for people. It's a whole nother level of connecting with people on the, on the relationship side of things and seeing them and listening to them and loving them and holding space for them. That I just wish that as a profession, we could continue to educate the general public about it. And, and we should care about this because once we actually have everybody thinking about the coach approach specifically, just in daily conversations of where we could listen, be present, trust, and come from a place of curiosity, that's really world peace right there. And so I would love it if, if we as a profession could continue to lead the charge in taking the mystery out of what it is and why everybody should care about our wonderful profession of coaching and, and do it. You don't have to be a certified coach to have these powerful conversations in your daily life. And I would just love to say that one of my favorite quotes of all time comes from uh, a high up executive at Marriott where he says, you know, leadership is about unlearning management and relearning how to be a human. And I think that coaching is a big piece of that, showing up human. Thank you for sharing. It resonates me a lot. And um, Sarah, you might also notice that there is the question we ask all our guests at the end of each conversation. And I would like to ask you this question. What is your key message to everybody who will listen to this conversation? Yeah, thank you for that. I think it's lean into your curiosity. Don't let the fear shut down a missing conversation. Be brave enough to have that conversation. And come from this place, coming from a place of curiosity, what is it like to be you? What could I learn here? That's just so much more powerful than coming from a place of fear. So don't let your fear take over that conversation and, and lean into it. That's where the growth is. That's where the discomfort is. That's where the stretch is. And, and that's what takes us all to the next level. So lean into those conversations. Beautifully said. Ole and I are also sharing that it's happening during every conversation we had and we are having now. Time is disappearing and new layers of thoughtful conversation, uh, thoughtful topics are emerging. As a former journalist, I'm eager to talk to you more. I'm sure that Ola also already started thinking about that. 
let's agree to have another record, another episode with you in the coming months and covering different topics. Now, Sarah, we thank you very much for being our conversational partner today. Once again, let us express deep gratitude to you and all your colleagues from ICF Metro DC chapter for professional support, deep compassion, and proactive actions we make together. Thank you. It's truly been my honor to be here with the two of you today. Thank you, Sarah. And yes, I'm sure that we will be staying together when the partnership initiative is over and we'll have more chances to arrange another conversation. What will be unfolding in the future, we will see. At least this podcast is open for you and your colleagues. For everybody who is listening to this podcast, please subscribe to get notification when new episodes will be released. Share your comments, questions, thoughts, ideas. Let's stay connected. You can see Larissa's and my contacts in the description for this podcast. And also, I would like to uh, ask you, Sarah, if you can give permission for us to share your contacts, website, and more information about what you're doing so more people can be connected with you. Yes, please. I would welcome the opportunity to continue the conversation on all fronts. Thank you. Once again... It was our privilege to have this conversation with Sarah Heppel, CEO and founder of Spectrum Leadership Solutions, LLC. Sarah is a top leadership consultant and executive coach who excels in cultivating leadership excellence. And as I said at the beginning, Sarah's mission is to maximize the team performance and well-being of 100,000 teams by 2025. Sarah is accredited Master Certified Coach, MCC by the International Coaching Federation. And Sarah is from the cohort of professional coaches, the members of ICF Metro DC chapter, who provides pro bono coaching to ICF Ukraine colleagues. Thank you, Oliver Salaitz, for co-hosting and co-creating this podcast. This podcast is growing and we are getting very interesting experience together. Using this time and one more opportunity, we say many thanks to all coaching colleagues who stand with Ukraine. More talks are coming. Stay tuned. Stay connected. Stay with Ukraine.